This is the story of drilling large diameter holes for emplacement of explosive devices in the underground test program of the Atomic Energy Commission at Paiute Mesa in the Nevada test site. Paiute Mesa is a rugged and arid 7,000 foot high plateau located about 100 miles from Las Vegas. In winter, snows cover the ground and temperatures fall below zero. In summer, temperatures sometimes approach those of nearby Death Valley. The Mesa is in the midst of a vast, inhospitable region far from any other inhabited area. This led to its selection as the place where deeper and larger underground nuclear detonations could be conducted with minimal chance of hazards to off-site residents from ground shock or other effects. The subsurface geology is volcanic in origin and consists of tufts and rhyolites to depths below 6,000 feet. Tufts make up three-fourths of the drilled interval with varying degrees of induration. Tufts encountered from the surface to several hundred feet of depth are fractured and broken with large crevices. The rhyolites, usually encountered at depths below 1,000 feet, are also broken and fractured and often caved from the walls into drilled holes. Crews, supervisors, and the largest drilling rigs ever manufactured were contracted by AEC from the most qualified drilling contractors. But since oil field rigs were not designed to drill large diameter holes, the equipment had to be modified by the contractors. At the same time, the AEC ordered construction of special big hole drilling tools. Most of the derricks used at Paiute are modified offshore multiple well types with 40-foot bases rated to over one million pounds. One contractor came up with a unique rig combining two masts and two draw works. With this combination, a six-foot diameter hole was drilled to 4,800 feet. Construction feats only dreamed of a few years ago are now being performed routinely as the equipment and knowledge of the drilling contractors combined with the big hole drilling tools and experience supplied by the Atomic Energy Commission provides the know-how and experience necessary to tackle the unprecedented big hole drilling program on Paiute Mesa. six feet in diameter are supplied by four major bit manufacturers. Bits and cutters are constantly under development and each manufacturer has made design contributions. Bits are shrouded to improve bottom hole cleaning. Rolling cutters are saddle mounted and bolted onto the body for fast changing. Sealed bearings make for longer bearing life. Some bits have up to 30 small cutters other bits use about seven king-size cutters. Like all big hole tools, bits must be handled by heavy moving equipment. A trolley car under the rig floor carries the bit over the hole and also serves as a working platform for mounting the bit on the drill collar. The drill collar is sectionalized. The inner stem is 42 feet long, 16 inches outside diameter and 13 inches inside diameter with a flange base and tool joint top connection. Washer-like weights, 18 inches thick and five feet in diameter, weighing 13,000 pounds each, are mounted along the stem.
A six-point full-gauge stabilizer is placed at the top of the drill collar below a weight. An eight-point full-gauge reamer is flanged between the bit and the drill collar. A clamp at the top holds the entire assembly as a fixed unit. Fully loaded, the assembly approaches 300,000 pounds in weight in a column less than 50 feet long. When the bit is below 4,000 feet, more than 600,000 pounds of weight is suspended from the hook. Because of the tremendous weights and sizes involved, special handling tools must be employed. The rigs have movable crown blocks. One rig has a removable section of floor, so the full drill collar can be set through the floor to the ground. Another rig has an overhead gantry crane for racking the drill pipe and a means for pulling the traveling block to one side and for lowering the block before the drill pipe stand is racked. The drill pipe is 13 and 3 8 inch outside diameter, 72 pound N80 casing with a four lead threaded tool joint. The tool joint is made up in one and six tenths turns to 100,000 foot pounds of torque. Because of the fast rate of departure of the thread, the breakout torque is only about three fourths of the makeup torque. The heaviest tongs available are combined with a hydraulic cylinder tong pulling unit to make up and break out the tool joints. Drilling line sizes range up to one and five eighths inches, in some cases making regrooving necessary for the drum and blocks because of the increased line diameter. Most of the big hole rigs are powered by electricity, which provides high torque and slow initial hoisting speeds for handling the big collar and pipe. The fractured intervals in the rock and the relatively deep water table present a challenging circulation problem. Because of severe loss of circulation with mud systems, air is used as the circulating medium. The large annular volumes require the use of reverse circulation with the returns coming up inside the drill pipe. Low pressure air with volumes up to 25,000 cubic feet per minute is used in reverse circulation above the water table at a pressure up to 15 pounds per square inch. The Kelly is a joint of 13 and 3 8 inch casing made square by welding on angle iron. Rotating speeds range from 5 to 20 revolutions per minute, with bit weights from 50,000 to 150,000 pounds. Rotating torques developed during drilling usually are less than the 100,000 foot-pounds used to make up the tool joint. Penetration rates average less than 2 feet per hour, but rates of more than 10 feet per hour have been temporarily maintained. Two and one-half tons of material are removed for every foot of bit advance. Material from above the water table is expelled in the form of dust and cuttings from pea size to thumb size, with occasional chunks as large as a fist. To improve the pickup of the cuttings at the bit, shrouds have been placed on the bits to direct the airflow close across the bottom. Air is circulated down the annulus where permeable formations may thief up to 30% of the volume injected. To minimize this loss of circulated air, various materials such as dry cement, bentonite, water, soap, 
and fine lost circulation material are injected into the air stream. A dual concentric string of 13 and 3 8 inch drill pipe and 7 inch casing is put into operation at about 2200 feet where dry formations merge into a damp transition zone. At the water table, natural water from fractures flows across the bit face, picks up the fine cuttings and is blown to the surface in quantities up to 400 barrels per hour. High pressure air at 300 pounds per square inch, boosted to 1200 pounds when needed, injected into the 13 and 3 8 inch by 7 inch annulus, lifts the water and cuttings up the 7 inch string to the surface. The dual string was pioneered on the Paiute Mesa as a workable solution to a difficult drilling problem. A straight hole is required for placement purposes. Hole deviation is measured and controlled with gyroscopic directional surveys and sonic caliber tools. The drilled hole is lined with 80-foot lengths of 48-inch inside diameter steel casing with wall thicknesses up to one and one-half inches, weighing over 800 pounds per foot for the thickest wall pipe. The thick walls, or equivalent structural strength, are needed to prevent collapse of the pipe under the water. Tensile strength must be sufficient to support the pipe weight to the total depth of the hole. External 5-inch outside diameter guides are welded onto the casing for the subsequent running of tubing for cement line. Each section of casing is picked up into the derrick with the draw works and is lined up with casings already in the hole. welders have been lowered inside the casing to weld the connection from the inside. Internal lineup clamps are now being provided so that internal welding should not be necessary in the future. Four welders working around the casing can weld a joint and have another section ready for lowering into the hole within two hours. A full length string of casing may weigh more than three million pounds. One million pound derrick will not stand the weight of all this casing. Therefore, powerful hydraulic casing jacks are used. The casing has outside lift rings welded eight feet apart. The casing jack completely encircles the pipe and has shoes that extend to the casing and fit under the lift rings. The hydraulic jack takes an eight foot stroke and lowers the casing eight feet per stroke. Hydraulic cylinders between the two levels of lift shoes provide the stroking action.
tubing is run into the five inch guides on the outside of the casing and water level indicators are run into the tubing during the first stage cementation. This tubing is used for the second and subsequent cement stages. The first stage cement job is performed through a 13 and 3 8 inch drill pipe which is sealed off at the bottom in the casing cement shoe. A 13 and 3 8 inch cementing head and 13 and 3 8 inch wiper plugs are used in much the same manner as oil field casing is cemented, with the major difference that no mud returns come to the surface. First stages, mixing more than 20,000 sacks of cement, have been performed with this arrangement. Seven cement trucks pumping cement from 50 bulk tanks have mixed the 20,000 sacks in about two hours. cement is pumped, water must be added to the inside of the casing to offset buoyancy and prevent collapse of the pipe from the external pressures. After the first stage is complete, the tubing lines are used to fill the annulus to the surface. The annular fill is performed in stages, since the formations will not accept a full column of cement. More than 100,000 sacks of cement may be used to cement one of these holes. Special types of cement must be used. Part of the hole is dry and part is underwater. So the weight and fluid loss properties of the cement must be closely controlled. Once cemented to the surface, the casing is baled dry. The rig is moved off and the hole is turned over to the miners. Total drilling, casing and cementing costs of Paiute Mesa holes amounts to about $2 million per hole. Men have met and overcome difficult challenges in drilling Paiute Mesa emplacement holes. As in most enterprises where man's skill and ingenuity are taxed to the limit, the nation's knowledge and technology have been extended by the big hole drilling program at remote Paiute Mesa.